My Doctor Said What is a program for health information. Be careful that if you want treatment and diagnosis of disease, you need to go to your local health care provider. Hi, this is Dr. Frank with My Doctor Said What. And here today we're going to do some and talk about some interesting things. So I'd like to say, first of all, a couple of quick facts. Again, wear your sunscreen, stay hydrated, it's summer. Use your lip balm uh, to keep your lips from becoming sunburned, especially if you can get one with a sunscreen in it. Also, read the directions because sunscreens are worse for you. Some sunscreens are worse for your health than others. And with that, I'd like to talk about general anxiety disorder today. I'm not a mental health professional, but you could talk to your health care provider and get recommendations if you did not know a mental health provider, but go to a qualified therapist, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, depending on what your needs are to talk about this. But one of the major concerns in our society today is anxiety and general anxiety disorder is probably the most common uh, anxiety issue that most people have so what is anxiety anxiety is our brain's way of dealing with stressors that come our way fight or flight uh, it was made in us as a hair in us to make sure that we can anticipate situations and try to maximize our outcomes to our benefit. Now, in today's modern world, we don't have to worry about gathering food in the U.S. most of the time or um, some of the things, uh, wild animal attacks, whatever. But we do have a whole different set of stressors that we have to deal with. Some of it is real and some is imagined. So here's what seems to be the issue. First of all, what things trigger stress in modern society here in the U.S.? It seems like some of the triggers are social media, uh, isolation, job dissatisfaction, and money worries and health worries. Now, Anxiety is an emotion that's expressed as feelings. So those feelings are worry, doubt, etc. Uh, many people have problems with uh, an obsessive need to control things. There are some things that are just out of your control. And you have to accept those. And that's, a, that's very tough for some people. We know there's a genetic component to anxiety, your predisposition. That doesn't mean you can't control it. It means you're just more predisposed to anxiety than other people. One of the things that will really cause havoc uh, with your ability to control anxiety is lack of sleep. So if you have a problem sleeping, you need to get to the core of why that is. And sometimes the anxiety is a vicious circle is what's causing you to have the inability to sleep. So there are control mechanisms that we've talked about before, such as yoga, different types of exercise, deep breathing, meditation, prayer, um, looking at a higher purpose and a higher power. Uh, again, as I said, I'm a Christian, so I find great solace in that quiet time and believing there's a bigger and higher purpose as well as a God that controls things. But if that's not your belief system, then you just need to get to a point where you believe in something beyond yourself because there are things you cannot control. And the things you can control, you don't have to obsessively worry about or constantly look at. Sometimes we we uh, have issues, so much issues with control, and we lose that control, especially if you have a job that you really don't like. And 50% of Americans really dislike their jobs. We have very low unemployment, but we have very high dissatisfaction with the employment. 
So you're going to have to make some choices. If it's a job you have to have forever, uh, which would be an unusual situation, then you're going to have to find ways to cope with that and find happiness and relief outside of your job and ways to cope better inside of your job. But the coping is going to have to start with a few general health rules, period, whatever your source of anxiety is. First of all, get good sleep. How do you do that? First of all, have a comfortable mattress, comfortable pillow. Uh, if you've got sleep apnea problems, you need to talk to your health care provider and find out why you're having these difficulties. Many times it's weight related or it's uh, related to pillow positioning. It's related to several different things and there are many new therapies for sleep apnea. So you need to talk to your health care provider about that. You need to relax before you go to bed. The last thing you want to do is have a big exercise session or mentally or physically or be thinking about solving problems or fixing something at work or fixing something at your house right before you go to bed. You need some time where you just relax, whether it's watching television and probably not a good idea to watch a horror movie right before you go to bed or some action packed thriller, but something a little more comedy uh, related or light or something that takes your mind off of everything, takes you a little bit out of your everyday reality. Uh, the old warm milk is true. Anything with tryptophan in it or certain proteins will cause you to uh, sleep better in some cases. And that doesn't work for everybody, but it can help. And again, you need to have a regular bedtime and you need to try to get eight hours of sleep every night. So you have to kind of determine what time you have to get up and what time you'll need to go to bed. And then some people worry about, oh, I've got to get to sleep. I've got to get to sleep. You got to stop that. You can never stop your brain while you're awake, but what you can do is turn the channel. And my uh, daughter, which is a therapist, a psychologist, uh, clinical psychologist will tell you, you got to turn the channel. You have to think of something else. Think of something pleasant. There's got to be pleasant things, memories, uh, activities you like to do, whatever. You need to think about those. And you can. You can train your brain to think about those things. And that's what you need to do. If you have medications that's interfering with your sleep, you need to talk to your health care provider about changing those medications. Social media. Last thing I would do is be on social media before I go to bed. Uh, matter of fact, you probably should limit your time on social media, period. Social media has become an outlet for people to uh, distance themselves from other human beings, but to openly show their frustrations and anger. And that's why some people, regardless of what you say, no matter how nice or no matter how non-controversial they'll make comments they'll make nasty rude mean uh conflicting comments and that's that internal conflict they have now what health issues cause anxiety to rise well first of all we know there is some genetic component so if your parents were anxious, you're probably going to be more prone to that. Again, being prone to something doesn't mean it's going to manifest itself if you do the proper things to minimize it. But you will have to work at it harder than someone that's less prone to anxiety. So, uh, first of all, that part you can't do much about. But what you can do, again, is you can look at the factors you can control. First of all, is stress if you've got stress again at work or at home in your relationships or with your children or your spouse um, you need to try to resolve those core issues i don't know that's easier said than done but you have to at least have a plan plan to work on how am i going to get from a to b how am i going to get in a lower stress environment you cannot constantly be stressed Second of all, hormones, which are a result of causing anxiety and a symptom manifest from anxiety. Cortisol, adrenaline, these are things that happen in your system that you have releases of when you're under this fight or flight 
um, scenario or when you're having this anxiety, which can lead to panic attacks, which is not good because constant uh, release of these hormones and that certainly increase your risk for things like heart disease. So we know that and uh, constant uh, inflammation in your system. Remember CRP, you want to get tested when you have your annual physical. Have an annual physical. So you may have a physical problem that's causing your anxiety. You may have a problem with your adrenal glands or your thyroid or some of your um, different hormones. Again, estrogen. Any woman that has ever entered into puberty or menopause or has had a monthly ovulation will tell you there's a pretty profound effect on hormones at times on your mood and your ability to cope with things so if you need um, to have some kind of hormone therapy depending on where you're at in life uh, then you need to talk to your health care provider about that to kind of take the edge off of some of those highs and lows same way with testosterone any high performing athlete that's been on testosterone supplements uh, can relate to things like roid rage, steroid rage, where they can't control their anger because of they have too much free testosterone. So that's a, a chemically induced state, but it can be naturally induced when you're just a person that has, has a high testosterone level. You need to have your health care provider test those things very simple tests and in, in your annual physical and unlike women it doesn't have quite a variation monthly or in seasons of life as it does uh, with estrogen but those are things you need to look at if you're becoming obese and overweight then you're going to have a different hormone profile especially men will have uh high levels of estrogen so if you see the moobs or the man boobs developing the excess weight around your middle and your hips as a man then you know your estrogen level is going up with your weight significantly and you need to have the simple solution to that is try to to reduce that weight to get more exercise exercise in itself can be very good because it it's just like any pleasurable activity, even if you don't think it's pleasurable at the time, will re release endorphins, which will help your uh, anxiety quite a bit. So you need to look at all these things. If you have a substance abuse problem, and when I say substance abuse, I'm not talking about just opioids or whatever, but if you're, if you're spending a lot of time uh, drinking, uh, uh, and you're drinking more than one drink a day, then that is going to affect your hormone levels. It's going to affect your ability to cope with anxiety. And temporarily, you may feel much more relaxed. But in the long run, it's going to cause issues that cause more anxiety over time. So you need to be very careful about watching substances, whether they're prescription, whether they're recreational, or whether they're unfortunately uh, illegal you definitely want to cut those things out of your life that cause these issues with that I would say um, give any of your questions to me at uh, mw uh, mdsw pod at gmail.com and feel free to watch my TikTok videos, my Facebook, and my Instagram for Dr. Frank Says What? And we'll come to understand better the health issues that affect us every day. And to my faithful listeners, I want to thank you over 30,000 that have listened in the short time I've been doing this podcast. Um, I want to thank you. We've had some audio difficulties in the last several weeks when we switched from the studio to try to do some home podcasting for convenience i am semi-retired so it's uh, tough to go into the studio but i we are fixing those issues and again i apologize and hope you stay with us and have a great day and a wonderful 2023 better health to you this is dr frank with my doctor said what Remember, send your comments and questions to Dr. Frank at mdswpod at gmail.com.